Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prep and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to do a focused renal slash GU assessment. Okay, we're not going to be talking about the G, the genitals in this one, but more like urinary renal function. So what are the parts of the renal assessment? What I have behind me are the parts of the head to toe that you the nurse will do and then some potential labs that you may have to draw or for like the UA you'd have to collect that. So let's talk about them. So some potential labs include the BUN and the creatinine. Those are pretty commonly done blood tests to check for renal function on our patients. We could do a CBC, ABGs, a CMP. A CMP is your comprehensive metabolic panel, so that's all like your electrolytes and stuff. A UA, your urinalysis. It could be clean catch, it could not be clean catch, it kind of depends on what the order is. Some things we might be checking for in the UA could be specific gravity, urine osmolarity, and the pH of the urine. The GFR, I know it's kind of by the UA stuff, it's not part of the UA, it's actually a blood test. Okay, so how well is the kidneys working to filter out the blood, to filter all the bad stuff out of the blood? As far as our head to toe goes, I've kind of broken it up into our subjective, so the things we're going to ask the patient about, and our objective, the things we're going to actually do. So our vital signs, of course, we would do that on anybody, but um, we're going to be checking specifically their blood pressure. We're going to palpate and or percuss for flank pain and CVA tenderness. So your flank is like this, like the side of your body. So asking if they have flank pain or touching them and seeing do they, ooh, you know, react to it. And then percussing for CVA tenderness. You're gonna go to the back, you're gonna go to the 12th rib of the back on your patient and you're gonna percuss either directly or indirectly. Direct percussion is like this tapping directly onto the body. Indirect percussion would be you put your hand or your finger or something like that in the way and then tap on the body. If you are an RN, you are expected to percuss on your patients. If you are an LPN, this is not in your scope of practice. We need to check hydration status. So that includes skin turgor and their mucous membranes. Are they moist and pink or are they dry? If we're assessing their urine, things we want to look for in the urine include color. So normal urine color is kind of like a pale yellow straw-like color. So if it's like an amber or an orange or something like that, we want to note that. Urine clarity. So your urine should be pretty clear, right? Normal healthy people have clear urine. If your urine is kind of cloudy, that could indicate there's something in the urine like protein or white blood cells. And then the odor of the urine. Urine normally has like a faint ammonia type smell to it. That's considered normal. Um, if it has a really strong smell or a really like putrid foul smell, that's definitely not normal. We can auscultate using our stethoscope for a renal artery brewery, which would indicate like the narrowing of the vessel. Okay, so it means that the blood flow is more turbulent, so it's having a harder time getting through. We're going to weigh our patient. Maybe if we're really concerned, we're going to weigh them every day, making sure that they don't gain or lose too much weight. Of course, we're going to do strict INO on our patients, so whatever's going in should probably come out, right? So if we're giving them, you know, a thousand ml bag of normal saline, right, and then they're only urinating 100 mLs in that day, that's a big red flag, right, so they should be pretty even. And then if this is a male patient, this is not a renal thing, but it's still the GU kind of thing, um, is a prostate exam. So usually an advanced practice nurse or the doctor is the one that performs the prostate exam on the patient, but it is part of this assessment, so I just wanted to make it known here in our objective. When we're talking subjective, these are all the questions we're going to ask our patient. So, voiding patterns. How frequently do you have to go to the bathroom? Is it, you know, five times a day? Is it 20 times a day? Urgency. So, when you feel the urge to void, is it like all of a sudden you have to go right now? 
And then any nocturia, so getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, how many times? Any difficulty with urination, like pain or burning? Hesitancy or straining, so do you have a difficult time starting your urine stream when you actually make it to the restroom? Any medications that could affect your urine? So if they say in the first question, yeah, I go to the bathroom very frequently. I go, you know, a couple times a day, like 20 times a day. And then you get down to medications and they tell you, well, I'm on a loop diuretic. Then you're going to put two and two together and go, oh, okay, well, that makes sense that you'd be going so frequently. So any medications that could affect their urine or any medications that could affect the way the kidneys work. Incontinence. So asking them if they experienced any incontinence is very important that you know that incontinence is not a normal part of aging. Just because your patient is 85 doesn't mean that we expect them to be incontinent. So asking them, have you experienced any types of incontinence? And some examples I put on here include stress, urge, and functional. So stress probably being the most common, which is where um, you sneeze or you laugh too hard or you cough or something like that, and then you kind of pee a little. Urge is when you feel the urge to avoid. You have to go right now, like there's no time to get to the bathroom. And then functional is actually one that we can do a lot to help with as the nurse. Functional is physically you're okay, right? You're able to go to the bathroom, but maybe there are barriers in your way to get to the bathroom, okay? So maybe you can't physically walk very well, or you need a lot of help, or there's a lot of stuff and clutter in your room, that kind of stuff. And then of course, history. Do they have any history of anything going on with their kidneys? History of renal disease, frequent UTIs, kidney stones, anything like that. So we want to know that information about our patient. And then the final little thing I put on here, not necessarily like part of the assessment, but stuff that you as the nurse need to keep in mind. So of course we want to provide privacy. But then also, we want to make sure we have a little bit more information in regards to their diet. If they have a high sodium diet, then they will have lower urine output. Okay? So when we're checking our INO on our patient, if we're noticing that, if we're noticing their output is a little bit lower, it could be as a result of their diet. So we definitely want to know their diet. And then also, if they drink a lot of caffeine or they drink a lot of alcohol, they're more likely to urinate more. So those are just some little facts, not necessarily part of the head to toe, but some knowledge that you as the nurse might want to have in the back of your mind when you're doing this kind of assessment on your patient. So I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.